this. You, 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 you've got a, a different look at running back group this year, right? Kobe's still around, but but it's a lot of young guys. How has the spring been for you? Uh, the spring has been well. First and f first off, we're happy to have Mike Hollins out there um, helping with student coaching, and he's been a, a great addition uh, in reference to the guys who we brought back. Thank you so much. Kobe Pace is the only guy we got who has any um, planning spirit. So um, he's done a great job um, um, emerging as one of the key leaders on the offense and in the running back room. So when we started spring practice, we was missing two key guys in the Xavier Brown and Jack Greasy. Both of them had um, off-season off surgery. So we, we only went into camp with three running backs. So we got KP who played. Then we had two freshmen that we signed. Uh, Noah Vaughn coming out of Maryville, and then we had Dante Hawthorne as a converted um, quarterback that we signed. So we asked uh, Landon Spell to move over from receiver room, and he's done a phenomenal job. He's an uh, option quarterback coming out of high school. So when we started, that was our four four guys rotating. So now, and just entered, just finished on um, practice nine, we just finished up. Finished, we started with KP and Noah Vaughn, and then the third guy, we had to add a new guy. The new guy was Davis Lane. Davis Lang's a former quarterback from the Lynchburg area, and um, because Dante's um, have an injury and Landon has had an injury, so they missed two practices. So the numbers are down. Um, the production and the expectation and the standards are the same. So um, the room does look different. We lost a lot of production and leadership from um, PJ Paris Jones and Mike Hollins, but I feel really good about um, KP. You know, what I mean, he's, he's stepping into that role pretty good. The surprise of the group has been Noah Vaughn. All right, he's flashed quite a bit. Uh, and if he continue to, um, to get better with the offense and, and, and do a better job of, of learning and, and straining on a consistent basis, he should have an opportunity to help us in the fall. Gotcha. With, with Kobe, what, what are you guys trying to pull out of him? Uh, right, he, he, he flashed some big time potential last year. He's had a breakout season in the past at Clemson. What are you trying to pull out of him? Because I, I assume he's going to be the number one guy. As of right now, he's the number one guy. The thing, Kobe's got more in him. And I think part of it is Kobe just uh, truly having full confidence in his own self. All right, and this is going to year two in the offensive system. We want him to emerge, take the next step in the game. So you know the offense, all right? So now just play um, carefree, all right? So we're trying to get him to let go and let loose so, so it could be way more consistent instead of the highs and the lows. So, um, and a lot of that has to do between the ears. And that's my job, interjecting confidence in him. And he's done a good job. He's done a really good job in pass protection, and you know, last year we didn't ask him to do a lot of that. We leaned on Mike Hollins and Paris Jones for the protection, and they did a phenomenal job. And now this year, he had to take a hold of that role, and he's done a good job up to this point. And I've been, I'm really proud of him. I just want him to have uh, the mindset to be the game changer every time, every play, whether I got the ball or not. And I think he has that ability. I just think he's got to be a little bit more um, aggressive in his mindset and a little bit more consistent. Gotcha. You said Noah Vaughn's kind of been a surprise of the group. Uh, no, nobody, you know, in the stands has, has, seen, has seen him play too much yet. May not have watched the highlight tape. What, what, what your fans, I guess, expect for, from Noah Vaughn, uh, skill set wise, the type of player he is? Well, the thing, uh, the body type, he, he has a body kind of like Mike Holland, so it's kind of, you know, short and stocky, great lower body um, type. He's got tremendous vision. Um, out of all the running backs, he's probably got the best vision. He's got tremendous feet. Okay, so he's able to make those shortcuts, able to make people miss in short spaces and, and, and be able to get vertical. He plays with an edge, okay, he plays with an edge, and he, he has some breakout speed. So I think he got the combination of the full package, all right? Um, he just got to continue to learn and grow. There's still too many um, inconsistency, and the part of that is just youth, all right? Last year, he had, um, coming out of high school, he suffered um, an injury in the playoffs, so he had to have surgery. Um, prior to coming here, and then we had to fix it, so he got another surgery time and got it. So he spent most of the freshman year on the look team. So he didn't get any reps for So every day is like day one for him, he's, and he's gotten better. It's just a matter of him stacking days and putting it together. But he's shown a lot of uh, flashes. Gotcha. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hey, Coach. How's it going? How you doing, Jack? I'm doing good. Um, you talked about Mike Collins and having him there helping your guys. 
What does it mean to have him there? And what have you seen his coaching style? I know Sudarian has said that he's been a huge help for him. Yeah. So first and foremost, he does a, a, a number for everybody. Like coach, he asked the same question, asked me on Thursdays, how's Mike Hollins doing as a coach? I said, coach, he gets better every day. He's assertive every day, he gets better. And not just at running back, he's helping a lot on special teams. Um, it came about, uh, about four weeks ago, I took him and Paris out for, for lunch on a Saturday. And I'm trying to get an idea of what their plans, what are their plans as they move forward. And Mike said, well, I thought about coaching. I said, say less. I said, um, come in here on Monday, see Coach E, and, um, and see, see what he says. But I said, ain't nobody going to turn down um, the opportunity to have Mike help us. So, and he's done a great job. I mean, the kids will respect him. He's a guy that's um, in the building every day. Um, he understands the position. He knows it. So he helps in the meeting. So it's been a tremendous help for me. All right, and, and so I trust him to make adjustments, um, substitution, et cetera, et cetera. So Mike, he's been a big help. I hope he just hangs in there and every day gets better as a coach and wants, wants, wants to get the bug. I hope the bug sticks to him. And he helps you on special teams too. I Ab absolutely. He's, he's helping them in every aspect. And uh, we got some veteran coaches that Mike Hollins jumping right in there and coaching just as much as they are. So we're very pleased with Mike. I know you haven't really talked to him about Xavier Brown. Obviously, last year he was hurt. But during that time, he obviously can watch and be attending in meetings. What have you seen from his growth from a guy who came in as a freshman, kind of getting deer in the headlights moments too, and then the guy now who's trying to learn a little bit more? Well, the, you, you hit it on the head. So Xavier came out, was uh, played as a first year, um, had some bright spots, and then he suffered those injuries. And then combined with another injury, so he's missed all of um, most of last year and then now to have that elbow tricep go down. He's done a good job. He started off a little slow at the beginning of spring ball, just um, getting acclimated back into the meetings. And But ever since then, he's been engaged every meeting and, and, and he's taking a lot of mental reps and he's actually getting some non-contact reps now. So you'll see him in there on some, he'll do all the individual work. He'll do some stuff in non-contact scale work. and. Um, it, as soon as we get the green light, I, I expect him to hit um, um, the old-fashioned for me was. But he's been really good. He's a great teammate. Um, he's helping some of the younger guys. I think he's a little disappointed because he's such a competitor. All right, He's one of those guys that want to compete, just like Jack Greasy. And both of those guys have been the thicker things in the fall, I hope. I know Chris Tyree is obviously brought in as a receiver, but obviously he's got so much talent and he has played at the running back room. With the numbers being down, is that something that you see this versatile guy and you can figure, hey, he can help us also in the run game? Well, we, we probably won't use him as a running back, but that don't mean he's not going to catch the, not going to get the ball from that position. So he's always going to be a wide receiver because that's what he wants to be. But we're going to use him any way we can. We're going to find ways to get Chris Tyree the ball. I don't know if you had the opportunity to see the big time play he had on um, last Thursday. I mean, phenomenal. He can play. He can flat out run. He's a kid that loves. It. He's a great teammate. So he's gonna be a return guy. He's gonna be a gunner on, on punts. We're gonna find ways to highlight all his talent. So whether or not it's at the slot position, at running back, at quarterback, whatever it takes to find ways to give him a number of catches per game. So yes, he's been a, he's been a delete, <laughs> a treat to coach. Pretty fired up about Chris. Uh, my final question is on uh, Noah Vaughn again. For for Noah, when you first saw him as a high school recruit, what kind of drew you to him? And now that you see him in action, do you like this is why I recruited you? Yeah, so when we went through the recruiting process, we liked this film. We thought he had great vision. We thought it was the ideal body type. Um, and we just weren't sure how fast he was. And we never met him because he's from Maryville. So we uh, kind of encouraged him to come to camp. He was close to committing to Coastal Carolina with the old staff. I said, look, you can go to Coastal Carolina anytime. I said, but you get one opportunity to come to UVA. I said, come to our camp. And he came down, his parents came down to camp. We put him through drill work. And what we saw was what we thought we saw on film. Tremendous feet, great vision, um, great ball skills, eye-hand coordination. And we only had about four, four running backs at that camp. And we, we put him through the test, we, you know, and he kept going through the drill words and, and got back together with staff say, I think he's good enough. And Coach E gave us the green light to offer him. And then I went out there and watched him live in the playoff game. And I was like, yes. So, um, and then when he got hurt, you kind of not sure. And then this spring, we're like, yes, thank God. It's exactly what we thought. So, yes, we, we're excited we got him. And he's really, he's really talented, really talented. Thanks, Coach. You're welcome. Thank you.
Hey coach, how are you? How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Uh, my question, kind of, you guys got off to a slow start in terms of the running game early on into the season, and it really got things going the middle portion towards the end of the season. Kind of, for this point, this season, obviously you don't want to have to kind of settle in and you want to get that going as soon as possible. Um, how do you get to that and how do you stop establish that it, run game as quickly as possible at the start of the season? Uh, that's a great question. It starts with Coach Kitchen. Starts with him, and it's one of the first thing he said to the offensive staff and, and to the offensive unit. Say, look, we're gonna run the football. All right, we're gonna run the wide zone. We're gonna run the football. So that starts with everybody. It starts with wide receivers blocking on the perimeter. Starts with the tight ends, offensive line, running backs. Everybody just committed to being a physical running offense. And then off that, you're gonna be able to th take shots, play action pads. So it just starts with his philosophy. We're gonna run the football, and we're, go we're committed to doing it. All right, and, 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 and every day we put them in hard situations, drills, where we're going to run the football versus uphill looks, and it's going to come down just mindset, pad level, hat placement, determination. Every time we get the ball, we, our mindset is a running back, you're going to get four yards, earn the right to carry the ball. And so that's a chip on our shoulder that we're going to carry every, every game, every practice, every rep. So um, that's just our philosophy. That's a great point. And, and if it, the only way to get better at running the ball is to run it is to run the football. So we're committed to running it. You know, that's why we do an inside run every day. We added a couple of different run schemes to feature some guys, skill sets. So we're gonna run, we'll be better running the football. All right, we'll be better because of the commitment from the coaching staff. That's gonna um, fall down onto the players. To, to, to kind of piggyback off that, what's Second year working with Coach F, does that help uh, in terms of, in terms of the run game? Yes, for the first and foremost, he's a phenomenal football coach, great teacher, all right, phenomenal football coach, great guy to work for, work with. So um, he helps. He helps a tremendous force to run games. He got a great understanding of the big picture. Got a great understanding of what the rules and the adjustments, uh, in-game adjustments, all this, et cetera. And, and for pass protection, I can't work for a better. Off I haven't worked with a better offensive line coach. So um, he's tr he's tremendous. He's tremendous. Puts us in great the, positions. I, I was gonna say I know I know the old line's down some starters this spring. Uh, any of those young guys standing out that, that your guys like running behind? Well, uh, Dick Harso is, is, was doing well. Um, obviously, before Drake Metcalf uh, suffered a little injury, he was doing well. Chad Whitmer is doing well. Um, those are all the guys that's going to gonna have to play at some point. So they may not be the starters come fall, but at some point they're going to have to play. And, you know, you're only as good as the next guy. So we, we're building tremendous depth, and, and the standards don't change. All right, The same expectation and standards for – um, Brian Stevens, same for Dick Hart, so, so we train them the same way. It's a beautiful thing when you got some starters that are getting some mineral routes and you're getting a chance to develop uh, some of your younger guys and guys who haven't had a lot of game experience. So I look at it as a positive. Thanks. Uh, one more question for me. Uh, Tony was mentioning that this was the first offseason this true offseason the staff has had coming into spring. So as you're past halfway point in the spring, have you seen that on the field, the, the difference because of that? Absolutely. I, and I think it starts with Coach E. We've been different. We've been different as a staff. We've been very intentional as a staff. We've been intentional about building the team. Building the team, and it starts with team. You could be team beats talent every day. And so every day we're preaching team. We're trying to make sure to nurture and, um, the culture of a team. So I think we're a closer unit. I think the guys are buying into the team aspect and they're playing harder for each other. So I think that starts at the head with Coach E and passed down to his coaches, down to the team. And, and I, you've seen it from day one down to day nine, the buying has been there. Now, that don't mean you're going to get wins. and We still got to put in the work and, you know, every practice has been demanding. All right, but we've been very um, intentional about it. And the only way to get better is to make them play game-like situations and put them in hard situations where stress them a little bit with their fatigue and then impress them a little bit more. So Coach E's done a good job with that and the kids have embraced it. So I think we're so much better for as a team, okay? And it has nothing to do with talent. It's all about the team. And if, we, if, if UVA don't beat UVA, we're going to have a chance every week, in my opinion.